just wanna be free when my people to prosper and hold it down. I just wanna be free when my people to prosper and hold it down. Don't you sit and wait. Contemplating on a revolution that time is now. I just wanna be free. 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 Can't you okay. see? Okay. Another episode of the Things I Wish I Knew About Money podcast. I'm your host, Kabil Smith. And I'm your co-host, your boy, Dre. Yeah, I, I, I feel so excited and alive Whoa, right now. Danny, right? I, I, and don't worry, people. It wasn't no um, leftover from yesterday. I wasn't up to <laughs> no badness last night. I just feel pretty amazing uh, today on a Sunday. Right? It's um, daylight saving time, but we, we lost yeah. an hour. But it's all good. <laughs> and, and, and that threw me off completely um, this morning. This um, spring back and spring forward foolishness, you know. Um, when I come from Jamaica, just one time I had to work with. True. And true. still adjusting to this spring back and spring forward thing. That's true. Because every time I was in Jamaica, like um, in December, it was different than being yeah. there in June and stuff. I'm like, oh. Okay, there's no there's no time change. Interesting. There's no time change. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh good. Time. And so mm. you, you and I were talking um earlier and um you know I was having conversations mm -hmm. uh yesterday or the day before and we we're talking about weird experiences. <laughs> uh we've had um weird dining experience in you know as it relates to going to a restaurant and whatnot yeah what was your weirdest uh customer service experience um that you've had um geez what would you say um ha it was well it wasn't really weird maybe it was mm. like my mistake in a sense yeah. i remember there was one time i was at a restaurant and my friend <laughs> My friend ordered something and then I ordered something, right? Yeah. So then they ordered before me and I ordered like a little bit after. And it was like a group of, let's say, 10. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I get my food first and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm eating. I was like, mm, 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 this food is so good. And then they come and they're like, oh that's not your meal <laughs> actually your friend's meal over there i was like oh, oh and then my food comes and can you believe her food was better than mine and i was like i don't want this one anymore i want mm. that food right. um but i wasn't able to get it still so i had to pay for you know my meal but i hated it but i can't think of anything like as like customer service other than you know the 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 waitress being rude or the waiter being rude so i just right right didn't give them a tip basically yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah no i feel like that um my weirdest experience mm. it's actually pretty weird so <laughs> brief yourselves <laughs> Listen, i'm sitting um, <laughs> <laughs> i actually went to the, you know, my I was with a couple of co-workers. I think it was mm. about three or four of us. Yeah. Uh, we went to a dining restaurant downstairs. Uh, I won't call the name of the restaurant, but as um we were sitting, mm. um the waitress uh she brought she had like you know her tray and a pitch of you know beer on top of it. Yeah. And she was like trying to use one hand to navigate while she was uh giving the um passing something to one of the you know the patrons mm. sitting around our table i don't know what happened but the entire thing of beer oh. spilled directly on top of me <laughs> mind it, during my this was during my lunch break oh, right no. so, you know after that i had to go back to work and i mean she was extremely apologetic she was very nice um she apologized a million times and 
uh, she gave, uh, it, we end up didn't, I don't think any of us paid anything. Yeah, like we got yeah. everything free. Um, but it was just so weird after that because, you know, I was smelling like beer <laughs> and I had to go back into the office. And so then my coworkers, you beer. know, for the end, <laughs> <laughs> so for the entire day, I had to be avoiding people in the office. Like Yo. when people come to talk to me, I have to be like, um, yeah, so we're saying uh, I have to stay in the car because. I don't want people to be thinking, yo, like I'm drinking and I'm smelling of beer on the job. And, you know, anyway, so that was a weird experience. <laughs> and my entire day at work was just so awkward because I was just trying to avoid mm-hmm. people like crazy. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, has anything? No, I've never had a waiter or a waitress um, spill anything on me. Thank heavens. Yeah. It's, Thank it's not a, it's not a cool feeling if it was like um water you know like it's, yeah it's, it's like, that's easier to deal with but beer um, smelling like beer at work yeah no not a good combination <laughs> but shout out to the people that drink during work <laughs> right exactly <laughs> what if my manager or director come by and be like um you know i walked by andre's uh, workstation today and she was like smelling like alcohol and you know like i get the impression he's drinking on the job yeah listen ah that would have been a fun story <laughs> anyways I, I, my coworkers would have been there to my defense anyways because they true. saw what happened so That's yeah true. but that was like <laughs> so weird <laughs> Mm. Well, I'm gl- glad we had that little icebreaker <laughs> for, for yeah, yeah, COVID-19, yeah. you know. Um, and I thought that today, even though this week has been crazy, <laughs> we really been. right that we we would discuss about something that happens a lot to folks, crazy things that happen to folks, um, and it's that lovely. Well, not I wouldn't say lovely word. Debt. Mm-hmm. Debt. Debt. D E B T. I want <laughs> I low key wanted that to be the title, but then I remember the show. <laughs> so, oh, we can still use it. We can still use it. Gail, please don't sue us or anything. <laughs> don't come for us. It's not like we are, yeah. I mean, it is There's no it trademark is. or copyright over that concept. So <laughs> and you know, yeah. Exactly. It's a sentence. Exactly. And, um, you know, this is something that obviously, especially during COVID, uh, many people have accumulated. Whew. And also, oh, <laughs> and it's just, you have to learn the, there's three types of debt, I like to say. Mm-hmm. There's the good debt, the bad debt, and the dirty, dirty debt <laughs> the and, reap come knocking at the door debt. Ugh, and i've i've um i personally haven't experienced all three but i have um our family has because i i think i mentioned in our first episode or second mm-hmm. episode that we have done um you know we went down that rat race and we were right. able to um fix it and well obviously because <laughs> right yeah we, yeah we fix it in a in a sense that it's it's at a a standstill that it's manageable and i think sometimes debt is manageable or unmanageable mm. you gotta decide decipher what is manageable and what what's not especially right. with, you know, the good debt um and what about you well, no, and then you mentioned how much debt you've been. Consumer debt. So consumer debt. And yeah, and so exactly. And I'm glad you raised your, your underscore consumer debt because um, as you, we're going to talk about today, like the, the different types that you rightfully highlighted earlier. Um, mm-hmm. For me, when I was 50,000 in debt, um, I would describe about uh, 60 or so percent as consumer. Yeah. And then um, 40% as good because a big chunk of um, my debt at the time was uh, my student loan mm-hmm. or maybe 70, 70, 30, somewhere there about, but I would say the majority was um, uh, consumer debt. I'm um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> student loans. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, 
<laughs> and I talk, we talked about this in the first podcast. You know, yeah. young fresh boy get you know <laughs> look a full time work and see a nice Honda and go in. I, I just twenty thousand dollar, right? You know, take on twenty thousand, tw- not twenty thousand. Actually, it was twenty eight thousand dollar first <laughs> time. Twenty eight thousand. Same thing that man. Yeah, man. Give me the key. Pass the car key. Drive out brand new Honda. You feel nice. Yeah. Uh, Thirty something thousand, just like that, right? Oh, indeed. Oh, um, indeed. <laughs> yeah, man, it was a learning experience. Still, man, I tell a lie, but the, uh, yeah. And then the other part was, uh, I think I had about maybe like I can't remember the number, but three grand in like on my credit card, which yeah. of course were that was accumulated because of consumer um, type of debt. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I had, um, you know, my what do you think name again? Overdraft protection. Ah. Right, we talked talk about it in our previous episode and things. So yeah, I was like, I was living the life. Man, I tell a lie. I was living the good life. The, mm. And that lifestyle, I would describe it as working to pay the bills 101. Um, because I'll tell you why I do that. Because one of the things that you'll find with me mm-hmm. um, on this podcast, and you know, people can come and challenge my thinking. That's fine. I love, I actually love that. Challenge. Is, <laughs> <laughs> we don't realize um the detriment i would say of conventional thinking yeah. right and what do i mean by that is like you know you come into a system i come from jamaica i've never heard the concept of working to pay the bills before mm-hmm. um the more you'll hear is working to put food on the table yes right but then i come here and i hear this notion of working to pay the bills and so i started to read a lot about personal finance yeah. and I start to look at people's personal balance sheet to get an understanding of what the bills are mm-hmm. that people are working to pay. And then I realized that a lot of them are consumer type debt. Yes. Um, and this even underscores in the podcast, the Project X Financial Podcast, Needs Versus Wants, mm-hmm. that you realize that these so-called bills, a lot of them are wants compared to needs, <laughs> right? So, Talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, you know, and that's something that we have learned throughout my personal journey is to challenge that conventional thinking, because when you get so comfortable with it, you just go with the status quo. And so this podcast today, we're going to talk about that, right? We're going to talk about different types of debt and mm-hmm. leveraging debt and all of them good things there. And I also want to um, spit some statistics. You know, I like to, you know, give you guys numbers. You know the number. <laughs> yeah. Numbers don't lie. Who sing the tune there? Ah, um, which Jamaican artist sing the tune there? Numbers don't lie. Go on, go on, talk. Don't challenge me. Don't challenge me. Hold um, on. Before, before I answer that, I'm going to give this stats and then I'm going to find out. Um, so basically, the Canadian households owe an average of a dollar seventy-one for every dollar of disposable income. A dollar seventy-one. Yes. Sure. Repeat that up, nobody again. A dollar seventy-one for every dollar. Oh, exactly. So let's put that into perspective. What I really mean, if you owe a dollar seventy-one. Exactly. For every dollar you make, uh-uh. right? So you are seventy-one dollars. So a dollar. So let's say you make a dollar, right? One dollar seventy-one. Let's say you decide to put a hundred percent of your income to our debt. It means that you're seventy-one cents behind. You're still shortfall. You still have a shortfall of seventy-one cents. That's a lot. So you're, that means that you're not making enough to even service your debt. Exactly. You're not even pay. You're not even um, paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> you're yeah, like your paychecks behind. You like, are a paycheck and seventy one percent behind. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to get funny <laughs> that. But you are almost two paychecks behind in that scenario. Exactly. That's actually scary, and it's that is scary. This this was from beef, like just when COVID happened. So I can only imagine, actually, no, ah, December. So December 16th of last year. So yeah. three months in, and you can only imagine how how it's accumulated since then. So um, 
I know a lot of folks will like, Camille, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, times are rough. I get it. I get it. <laughs> But there is ways to, um, to, to conquer it. And Yeah. I'm going to give an example later because Right. I'm sorry. There, there are individuals that have gave, gave me testimonials and, and I feel like there's no excuse, no Yeah. excuse, especially Excuse if me, yeah. you're, especially if you're still, um, getting an income. Yeah. There's, there's kind of no excuse. You have to, first things first, There's, yep. budget. Your budget, if you can't fix up your budget so you can reduce this debt, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Problem. And I, I, as I speak about testimonial, I, I actually got a testimonial on the previous podcast on Facebook. Um, and somebody uh, reached out to me. I won't name her because, um, you know, of course, she's still going through the process of like figuring out um, she wants to be able to come forward Yeah. uh, to talk about her experience. So I'll, of course, afford her the opportunity to do that. So I'm not going to name her. Uh, but she agreed with some of the things that we talked about last week um, in the previous podcast about the, the black tax. And, um, you know, she's also going through that process of coming out of debt and restructuring her finances. Mm hmm But So, so that is uh, huge. So shout out to that person. And of course, like I said, I'll afford her the opportunity. And when she comes on our podcast, she'll bring on our experience for us, right? Give her a big shout out. I'll win on Neymar. Give her the, can we sound that for her? Because she is restructuring her life and her finances. She and her, her um, partner. So really love that That's um, very for, for important. her. Um, <laughs> you would think I'd have it on 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 speed though. Hold on, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. And, and and let me let me put this um this dollar dollar seventy one into perspective for some people. Mm. A dollar, if, if, if you look at a business, right, or a business operate, in accounting, they have a concept that they call going concern, right? So when an auditor audits a financial statement or you, for example, look at the financial statement, one of the things that you look for that is huge, this is material. And in, the, in accounting, we have what we call is ma uh, materiality. Uh, materiality just simply means that Um, the outcome of certain things is so huge that it can have a devastating impact on the business. Yes. So let's put that into perspective of our personal life. Uh, if a business had um, debt, like they, were, they had a dollar, for every dollar they make, they owe $1.71 in debt. That would mean that the business has a going concern issue. That means that within the next 12, month, Yes. 12 Mm -hmm. months, they are unable to pay their current liabilities. Not to mention long, they're unable to pay their current liability. So an auditor looking at that uh, business would express an opinion to say that we are concerned that this business would be able to operate in the foreseeable future. Mm And that's a huge opinion from an auditor. So put that in the context of your personal life. This is me as your auditor now and Camille as your auditor expressing doubt that at this current rate, you will be unable to operate in the foreseeable future at this current level, right? And and the thing is, and I'm glad you said that, like in a perspective of Yeah. this, I keep telling folks, your personal finance is basically a business. Consider your 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 personal life as a business. Your balance sheet, Yep. <laughs> income statement is is a business. The, the same way how like, which one? I'm gonna say Best Buy. The same way how Best Buy has like assets and liabilities, you have assets and liabilities as well. And Right. how is your debt? Um, are you accumulating debt to get assets or are you accumulating debt to get liabilities? Right. And that's, that's one thing that we have to, if we try stop being consumers and become like owners, that's a way to get out of debt, people. Yeah, precisely, precisely. You're, you're absolutely right. You have, we have our personal balance sheet. We have our personal income statement. Yeah. Our personal lives, lives is, it operates similar to a business. Mm -hmm. And you have to be that business manager, that money manager 
of your finances. Unless you need some help from us. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. There you go. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like, and, you know, it is not, you know, and we're not here to, to, you know, like to upsell or anything, but if you need help, you just need help, right? Mm -hmm. It is prudent. I've had to reach out to people uh, before mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, during my journey, right? Yes. But the important thing is that you become managers of your finances, mm -hmm. but not to, not to scare anybody, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about bad debt, good debt, and ugly debt, like break it down for people because, you know, debt in and, for, in and of itself is not necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. Right away, the first thing that when people hear about borrowing, oh, no, I don't want to borrow. I want to finance things cash 100 percent yeah right that used to be me <laughs> <laughs> huh? that used to be me i was like no yeah. i don't want to borrow it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um it, i always have a battle with my dad because he loves credit cards or line of mm. credit he's like it's your money i was like oh oh oh, oh. it is not your money <laughs> it is yep. someone else's money <laughs> 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 and um i always I always heard the story like, you know, when you're back home, when you're building a house, mm -hmm. you don't usually accumulate debt to build the house. You usually save up to, to you know, build build onto the house. And I'm like, look how you go back, you get to like foreign or Canada, you, right. I'll say US, because I don't know about the UK houses. And we, we are very, we're just focused on debt. And I don't know what happened that we're focused so much on debt because some people just think debt is, is just the way of life. Like we're always yeah. going to have debt. And I'm like, mm, mm, will we, we don't have to always have debt or if you're going to have debt, have it as a current liability, like we mentioned. Right. Right. And like less than a, less than 12 months. I, I, and that is an important uh, uh, perspective there. Um, and I agree with you mm -hmm. on the, if you're gonna have that, have it as a liability, right? Because if you have it as a liability mm -hmm. and you know, on your balance sheet, your a current liability, on your, pers on your personal um, statement, yes. that liability, let's use the, con the, the example of a house, right? If you took out debt to buy a house, right? Um, let's say the house, and these numbers, of course, they don't reflect the current market reality. But let's use, <laughs> for simplicity, okay. let's use $100,000. Why? Right? Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? Hey, you know, which part? Um, what, what the tone in him where uh, anyone watch? Um, oh, boy. Anyways, the song earlier is Pop by Popcorn. Numbers don't lie. So I just ah! remember. So my brain works like that. Sometimes I forget what I come back. But if it, if you want a house for hundred thousand dollars, you can get it in Storybrook. Anybody know the town called Storybrook? Apparently, so I watched this. Um, you know the Disney movie. What is it's called? Where they have all the um the Disney's the Disney um favorites into one like TV Disney? show. TV show. I was gonna say um. Not a TV show, but um. The movie. I was gonna say fan. <laughs> I think it's called something another di diary. Um, oh, okay, okay. There's not. Um, the yeah, like, but they have like all the Disney favorites into one thing, mm. and it right. And the, anyways, it, it, it's filmed in this town called Storybrook. Uh, I did some research, and apparently, Storybrook is here in Canada, in BC. Uh, right. I thought <laughs> you were talking about Ontario. Google like, will be my friend. Um, we can find it on Google. But anyways, back to the example. I'll find it when when you're talking. All right. <laughs> Well, let's say, okay, you, yes. <laughs> let's say on your personal balance sheet, you walk into the bank today, yeah. right? You take out this house. Let's say you put 10% down payment, right? House for 100%. And you can use these numbers, um, the right numbers in your personal situation. But this is how you're going to create your balance sheet, right? And for those who don't know, a balance sheet is, um, it gives a snapshot of your financial health for that moment in time. Yes. So unlike an income statement that shows your income over a period of time, the balance sheet is so important because it's that moment in time. It captures the current reality, 
of your situation. All right. So let's say we go to the bank, banks mortgage hundred thousand dollar, ten percent down payment. So what that means that on our balance sheet, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're gonna say um, we're gonna now have liability of uh, ninety um, ninety thousand dollars, right? That's gonna be your long term liability because you're gonna have a long period of time to pay it off, mm -hmm. right? So that ninety thousand dollars that you're borrowing is gonna be a long term. Anything that spans beyond twelve months is long term. Right. The portion that you have to pay within that. 12 month period, which will be your monthly mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. And so for that 12 month, let's say you had to pay $1,000 each month, that $12,000 would be your current liability, mm -hmm. the portion that you're required to pay within the 12 month period, right? So on your balance sheet, you're going to have current liability of 12,000, right? Mm -hmm. And the long-term portion. And as you pay off your current liability, that long-term liability will go down. Yeah. But on the asset side, right? On the asset side, you know, speaking from an asset perspective, so you took out this loan and it's a li liability. As you pay off the mortgage, the portion of the mortgage that's paid off becomes an asset to you, mm -hmm. right? Becomes something that you own. Mm -hmm. That proceed, that difference between what you borrow and what you've paid into the property becomes your portion. Yes. But let's say you bought this house in Storybrook and it's now worth $200,000, right? You bought the 100, so that's a 100% return. You pay back the bank the 90,000 mm. and then you get to keep 110,000, oh. right? So even though this is a debt, yes. it is classified as a good debt because it helps you to be better off. The idea behind it, behind it is that it helps you to become better off right in the long term am i on the right track yes you are so i'm glad you said the good debt and we confirmed so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to be in a perspective as someone that doesn't you know know personal finance would you consider a student loan good debt <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what uh we've had this question so many times yes. and multiple perspective and this is why i love when people challenge my thinking mm -hmm. because at first i used to say student loan is a good debt yes but then i've gotten other perspectives and i've altered my perspective because i've agreed with what those people are saying mm -hmm. so a student loan it can and it can and it, and it can be a good debt in the sense that it's an investment of course in your education mm -hmm. with the hope that it will get you um you know a better paying job or you know more opportunities, right? Yeah. So it can be, but for some people, um, you know, they ended up stuck with the you know they take on this massive student loan, and you'll see this more in the U.S. Yes. They can't get a job, they can't get a good paying job. The opportunities, you take on this massive debt, mm. right? But then your earning potential hasn't really changed. Mm. You're in the same position, and you're stuck with that debt. Yes. So from a return on investment perspective, there might be none. Mm -hmm. Some people as well might have limiting circumstances. Let's use an extreme scenario where mm -hmm. somebody has some type of criminal record and they can't get any work, but they've gone to college or mm -hmm. wherever and they've, they've done certain education, uh, uh, take on certain education um, qualification or whatever, and they still can't find a job. But now they're stuck with this debt that is not producing a return and an investment. Mm -hmm. So what my you know my thing is it really depends on the person's situation yeah however um you know some people it's just purely uh, a good debt what mm -hmm. i don't know what's your what's your uh, perspective on it so I, I agree like before it would be considered good debt because mm -hmm. in a sense your the game plan is you go to school, you get a good job, and then, you know, you yeah. you paid it off and everything. But I noticed in the last couple years, um, I have a lot of friends, not even a lot of friends. I know folks that it took 10 years or so to pay off their student loan. And right. it's like, dang, 
really? Like, I feel like if it takes more to 10 to 15 years to pay off your student loan, can you really consider it like good debt? And I know right now, like the economy, it's it's kind of hindering us into, right. right now it's hindering us because we're always told like to go to school, get a job, work there for a good while, and then you retire and you're good. Ah. Yeah. But if you think about it, <laughs> the job securities these days, <laughs> It's, yep. it's not realistic. So I'm not telling folks not to go to school, but try to see which um, which schooling it works for you because there's right, right. trades, trades, why? <laughs> <laughs> Those mechanics make money, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, yep. And also like, don't just um think of the main like oh be a lawyer doctor accountant there are different ways to being a great tradesperson or, or but if you love that those stuff like being a doctor and mm -hmm. lawyer fine it just yeah. be prepared to pay a whole heap of money <laughs> and yeah yeah also I was trying to think something um, it is. So it's kind of good debt in a sense, but ah, in the States, in the States, um, mm -hmm. debt, student loan debt is actually going to be more than a mortgage debt in a couple yeah. years now. And that's just crazy to me. That is insane. Yeah. I'm like, that is insane. So, so folks, stay in canada if you're gonna get <laughs> <laughs> oh god our so like in four years our four years university is there one year so yeah so, ah for for high schoolers or middle schoolers mm -hmm. to prepare for these type of stuff and i think you mentioned it before in a different webinar get those grants yeah. Scholarships. Get as much as you can. Yeah. Try to curve. Search for them. They're there. Yeah. That's, they're that's there. one advice I gave recently. So that's, yeah, that's there. the way. <laughs> um, yeah. What about what about bad debt? Mm. Bad debt. That's a good one. Oh, and by the way, um, I found the the name of the Disney thing that I was trying to find. It's called Once Upon a Time. <laughs> oh, oh shucks. Yeah, my coworkers laugh at me for watching that, but I'll tell you this. Once you start watching it, yeah. That's it. You're gonna keep watching. It's really good. That that's once upon a time. Isn't that that's with the dinosaurs, no? No, no, no. It's not with the dinosaur. Like, um, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's like a sequel, like, right? It's a combination of all the um the Disney re you know, those Disney favorites. Yeah. They built them and it's kind of like, you know, you have this person who they are in the real world and yeah. they can go back and forth between the real world and into this place called Storybrook, where all the magic is. So when you're in the real world, they don't really have magic. Mm -hmm. But then when they go back into Storybrook in the in the in the in the fake world, you know, like everybody has magic and then you you see the, the evil queen and whatever. Anyways, I really I good. Teach myself, guys. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I know this has nothing to do with good debt, bad debt, or ugly debt. So uh, my apologies for going uh, uh, off course there. But OK, so bad debt. So now we're moving away from the good stuff, right? And anyways, the one thing I want to highlight before we go on to the bad debt is this mm. whole notion of leveraging debt, right? So uh, Camille and I were talking about this earlier. And so leveraging, so you know, we come across these finance concepts a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to make it a little bit uh, more uh, easier to understand for people, but when you hear people say, I leverage debt, um, I leverage, you know, it's using debt to your advantage. So I don't grow up rich. I don't have a mom or a dad where I can say, yo, I need 200,000 to buy a house. And they're like, all right, I'm going to wire it to your account later on. Nice. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, <laughs> whoever has that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which means that uh, a lot of projects that I take on, I'm going to have to borrow money to take it on. Mm -hmm. But you want to take on projects that will produce a return on that debt, a return on investment. So that's what the leveraging is. And people get, that's where creativity comes in. I'll mm -hmm. tell you this, the more creative you can get with debt 
to produce that good return and investment, the more successful you'll be. But you have to think about how you can use debt to better your situation. And it cannot be the focus of consumer debt. Anyways, go on to bad debt. So bad debt, these are debt that don't produce no return. So these are the consumer stuff, like, the, you know, all the flashy stuff and, you know, all of them stuff that we we'll spend money on. You know, if you buy a big name brand shirt today for $500 and you sell it back tomorrow, chances are you're going to have to sell it for less. 500 What shirt are you getting for 500 <laughs> I've seen shirt for 500 Look, I tell her this. I won't call the company name, but even when I went to Paris and I walked into this store, mm. my polo shirt was like $700 for a polo shirt. I won't call the name, but I'm pretty sure people can speculate as to which company I may have walked into their store and saw that shirt. Did you see my face? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, and I'm just so I'm I'm anti name brand per se, or sorry, anti expensive. Right. <laughs> I just think it's a point. But um, yeah. So credit card is one. Well, what about what about a car? A car, yeah. I mean, a car, for the most part, I see a car as a bad debt because a car, you buy a car, it depreciates. Yes. And as soon as you peel off the dang car de dealership. Yep. What, about 20% they say? Yeah. You lose 20% in value the moment you drive off. Wow. Right? And you're stuck with paying the full price of the car plus interest. Mm. Right? So generally speaking... It is a bad debt. However, we do understand, you know, I'll tell you this, like we understand the need for a car. But again, right. it has to go back to an assessment of your financial situation and your personal situation. We know that a car in Canada, I mean, it's convenient here, but we know the place cola or whatever. And a lot of people just use that to justify the place cola and the place this. <laughs> do not use that to make your decision. Use your financial situation yeah. to make the decision as to whether or not you can afford it. Especially right? That's the, the distinction. Type of car too. Like, and the type of car, exactly. Ah, Because guess what? When you get a car, there's way more expenses coming. Yep. I learned the hard way. Gee, yep. Yep. especially we all insurance. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, and I'll tell you this, a lot of people look only at the initial cost. Mm -hmm. Let's say you buy the car for 30 grand. They, we look at the initial cost, but you carrying that car, mm -hmm. let's say a 10 year period. When you look at, let's do some math and some quick math. See, 28K initial cost. Let's say for the year, you spend four grand on insurance, right? And then, uh, you know, let's say two grand on maintenance. Mm -hmm. Let's say fuel another four grand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there, but these carrying costs for, to the, for each year, four plus two plus four, that's 10. If you do 10 uh, grand, right, times, let's say five years, yeah. that's $50,000 on top of the cost that you buy the car for. And this is, these are just rough numbers. So a car, 78,000. And then a lot of people say, oh, I know I can't come up with a down payment. Yes, you can. So when you make decisions, you have to assess your financial reality and think about the aggregate cost over a period of time that's all and that's what the things that i wish i knew about money that's what we do we hey. challenge the conventional thinking isn't that my right my sister <laughs> yeah, no, we do challenge <laughs> challenge, challenge because <laughs> seventy eight thousand. wow like oh just thinking about it i when i got my car i it was it was used it was um, altogether ten thousand. Yeah. I did do a down payment. I ideally I would do more of a down payment in the future, or I'd, would I? And then that's the that's the argument, right? Would you yeah. pay up front for a car, or would you lease, or would you finance? And that's I think that's different. That's a different. That's, topic. that's a whole different topic, and that's. Yeah, because I actually saw somebody talking about that on Facebook the other day, but we will definitely have a podcast yeah. on leasing versus buying. So I think a lot of people would be interested mm -hmm. in that discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and then jumping on the, the other type of debt, uh, 
would be the ugly one, right? The <laughs> ugly one, the wicked one, the one where rather blindly I not even know about it. And I think a lot of people know the one that. Payday loans. <laughs> Payday loans. Pay day loan. Ugh. Ugh. I'm, I'm, there's so much disgust <laughs> when I think about payday loans and I'm, it, it's, it's like a highway robbery and I know there yeah. are folks that work or have used it and so I'm not going to, you know, call any names right. and stuff. But I, and I'm, I feel bad because I've actually worked at one. Right. And I kid you not when I say my soul was taken because <laughs> of <laughs> like how I felt, because I knew right. that I wanted to help people get out of debt. And right. I right. pause it. It just, it didn't, it was just not a good feeling. So, but whoever is working or is using it i am not um dogging you i'm not um yeah trying to shame you or anything it's just my personal morals right opinion. right um but i what is it like 300 percent interest rate yeah and I, I did the calculation just now um and yeah just like i said we're not um bashing anyone because life happens mm -hmm. it can happen to me it can happen to Camille, it can happen to anyone. Yeah. Life happens, mm -hmm. right? But at some point, you know, we have to uh, start thinking about how we can break certain cycle, yes. um, right? And so that's why, you know, we, we are given the resources here. Uh, but let's put this into perspective again. So, it, you know, what happens uh, when you, you walk into a payday loan store, mm -hmm. you'll see something like for, you know, I think it's like 15% interest rate. Yes. Uh, because the Ontario government, quote unquote, caps it, right? But here's the thing. Uh, what you're seeing there is uh, you, you'll walk in and you see like for every 100, it's like $15 per 100. So that's 15% interest, right? Uh, you know, you take that loan and you say, okay, not bad. It's lower than a credit card because a credit card is 22%. Yes. If you only take the loan that one time, yes, it, it will be lower. If it's one time for the year that you, you've taken it, Yes, it's lower than a, it could be lower than a credit card because credit card is twenty two percent. But if you decided to take that, if you if you've gone to a payday loan more than once within that year, mm -hmm. or if you go every single two weeks that you get paid, like as the name suggests, payday, there you, typically for the most nine to five or if not all, there are twenty six biweekly payments in the year. So we get paid twenty six times in the year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go every single payday you now have to take that 15% interest and convert it to what they call the annual percentage rate, which I mean, no, no, no people don't do this. So, and this is probably new to a lot of people. So that annual percentage rate, which is the aggregate, the total of all the interest that you're paying over that one year period, now becomes 26, the total amount of paychecks you get, yes. times that 15% interest, which is, 390 percent mm. for the year i'll tell you this not even the poorest person who trying to become rich is gonna borrow at 390 percent you will, chances of you earning 390 percent is so slim think of it like when your granny asks if a string up one needle <laughs> uh, with a tread and yeah try to push the the the, the <laughs> tread <laughs> the chance of earning 309 percent coming like the need the trend that we are trying to push through the needle yep. to get it um together <laughs> you know what that's I mean? insane <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> it's, it's insane because that is the official beginning of a rat race of a right. the rat race of the debt trap um especially if you miss a payment if if it's late you're remember how we we're just talking about the dollar 71 yeah it, it's further than that right after yep. and and i don't know about you but i've always had a like there's times when i like owe people and as soon as you owe them back you're like oh i need that money again because i'm i'm just so behind with things and 
that's what happens at a payday loan. Yeah. I've I've had calls and talks and and it especially in the states because it was usually for people in the states. Mm -mm. Right. <laughs> yep. It, it is crazy. And as you're examining, you know, the types of debt available to you, one of the things that I like to do when I make decisions, this is how I make decisions. So I'm sharing um, some of my perspective. I like to create a list of all the options available to me. So I'll say option A, option mm -hmm. B, option C. And I'm going to be honest, I have to credit um, the fact that I'm doing my CPA because that's how they teach you to reason. To look at all the options. I have to credit that, but I'm sharing with people. I like to put all my options. Yes. And then I look at the financial factors. So mm -hmm. I'll start with option A, if it's financial stuff that I'm looking at, I'll yeah. say, what is the amount I want? What is the cost of borrowing? The cost of borrowing is the interest rate that you're expected to pay over what period of time. And I'll do that for all the options. So option can be use credit card, use line of credit, mm -hmm. uh, use um, payday loan. So you have three options. And I know some people, they got far less options. But before you make a decision, some of us love to make that decision as we are qualified. So you walk into the store and it's whatever store you qualify for, that's what you're going with. No, no. look at all the options. Which one has the lowest financial impact? Yes. Right? Or, or which one has better outcomes financially? Then I like to look at the qualitative factors. So what am I trying to achieve and mm -hmm. which one aligns better with what I'm trying to achieve? And I look at all the qualitative factors for each. And then... I come to a conclusion and which of the option I'm going with. And that's a great um, way to do things. I think I started doing that as well. Yeah. Um, I, I kid you not. I rather, <laughs> I rather like go and do Uber eats again, than mm -hmm. go to a payday loan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, or, or borrow so before... money from my, my mom or something and say, listen, I need to borrow this money. I'll pay you back within this time. Right. And that's interest free. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hey, not. if you can get an interest free loan, then why not? Why that's not? Why, that's why I wanted to borrow money from her. She was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna start adding interest. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why do we mm. have to be so drastic? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think the best thing to to do is is see your options because the credit card, as we know, is normally nineteen to twenty two percent. Right. Um. Also, a line of credit, depending on who you're with, it could be yeah. what, like seven, seven, nine percent. Yeah. Mine, I got, I, um, I, because I was, I'm a student, I got a lower rate. I think mine is like three point something percent. Guys, you so, hear that? Freebie, there's <laughs> a gem. Get it? <laughs> student. So look for the, if you're a student, look for the student line of credits. They're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh um, oh no, but this, that, that's about credit scores and stuff. But so we'll keep, we'll stay with debt. Um, so those are the three types. So there's good debt, mm -hmm. bad debt, and I like to say dirty. Dirty debt. <laughs> and but how how do we solve this issue? Because I feel like there are ways to solve these 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 issues, right? Mm -hmm. I always say it goes back to a budget, but I I know two two strategies to pay yeah. up. Um, it's the snowball method and the avalanche method, and I believe you mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. Shout out to Andre for <laughs> uh, his his newsletter this month had these he these strategies. So yeah, you go on his website to check it out. And I believe I shameless plug. I also made an article. <laughs> article. Okay, good stuff. Just to, just to and and it's remember these debts are either manageable or non manageable. When it yeah. starts to become unmanageable, you want to tackle it as as fast as you can to get yeah. out of this rat race. Yeah, exactly. Which which method which method do you like? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell. I mean, I, 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 a part of it too. The key about, in all of this is to be on top of your debt, like what icing is on top of a cake. Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, I, I'm really sorry. Uh, sometimes 
I, I think I've gotten into this dad joke kind of, well, this is not a dad joke, but I've been given some cheesy dad joke and I, uh, my cheesiness probably spill over into trying to give these jokes. But anyways, mm. my method, um, because the method I like is the avalanche method. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I take, when I, when I uh, and this is because of um, this quote by Albert Einstein that says, you know, those who know the power of compound interest yeah. earns it. Those who don't know it pays it. So when I look at that, I like to factor in interest rate in my decisions when it comes to money. And so because of that, I, the avalanche method looks at the debt with the highest interest rate first. And interest rate that you're paying uh, is synonymous to your cost of borrowing. What is, it, what, what is it costing me? And so I look at that and I said, you know what? I'm going to put out the fire that, that's blazing the, the, the most first. Yeah. And so that's why I look at my debt. So I look at the one with the highest interest and I yeah. paid off first. And then from there, I go forward. But for some people, mm -hmm. you know, they might have different uh, reasons and different motivation uh, yeah. to pay off debt. So what would be yours? Uh, that would be mine, the avalanche method um, to answer the question. So, and, and I want to, hmm. so I, I like that method. Mm -hmm. However, I think I did base, actually, I feel like I did like my own quirky <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, when we, when I had my OSAP, my OSAP was like, which is student loans to non-Canadians. Um, mm -hmm. It was 28, mm, accumulated to like 30,000, right? So Ooh. I wanted to get rid of that ish quick. <laughs> I oh, wanted yeah. to get rid of that ish quick. So there, like when I finally paid it off in 2017, um, I was like, yes, I'm done, finally. And someone asked me like, why didn't you pay off your credit card first? I'm like, listen, <laughs> the, the amount of years I had this mofo for, I'm yeah, really yeah to get rid of this first because it was like a sigh of relief and yeah. and i know the interest rate wasn't the highest but i went based on i guess in a sense the largest balance and paid it off right. because i knew i could handle the credit card and pay that off quickly um mm -hmm. Dang, so what is that? That's like that's like in between. <laughs> that's like between <laughs> the snowball and the avalanche method. But I know the snowball method is what normally people do because it helps give people um small victories. So I mean, I'll say I do a snowball method most times. Um mm -hmm. just to get that small victory, but you might pay more um interest and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So snowball method, avalanche, and I think there's one more. There's a there's a minimum minimum monthly payment, but I don't recommend that because <laughs> you're not taking an interest any at all. No. Takes longer. Yeah. No, no. Always pay more into it, guys. Always. Or ladies too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I mean, uh, we don't want debt to do us part. Um, so yeah, I think there's some really good uh, tips and discussion here today. Yes. Um, and, you know, when it comes to debt, there is a, there's good and, and, and bad impact, but, you know, debt can affect you financially and mentally as well, right? So you definitely want to stay on top of your finances, right? And stay on top of debt and, you know, um, stay tuned, keep sticking with us. Uh, next week, actually, the next podcast, we have, uh, we decided we're giving a early, so I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but we're going to talk about branding for success Whoa. like personal branding yeah right um and what that looks like and how you can succeed how you can create that image uh for success look how we got um, the, we're giving you guys some nuggets and and nuggets. <laughs> and, and vegan nuggets <laughs> shout out to the vegan though here um yeah because usually we don't want to tell you guys what's going to be discussed next week but yeah. you know we're, we're giving that to you guys this well, week. Yeah, tip this week. Right? Especially because we gave you a, 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 a full episode of, of great things. Um, so please like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a next friend, have discussions, 
ask us questions we are here for it <laughs> all right sounds good all right on that note folks wrap it up mm -hmm. because you guys are our family Jeez. <laughs> If I want it, me hate a friend killer. You no believe in a friend killer. Family, family. I miss a family. Sure. We love me far more than do.